Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Herb Oracle is on Facebook. I'm always pimping out the Instagram page, kind of. Yeah, I do. In the intro, follow me on Instagram and I'll show you a picture of the cards. Um, But Herb Oracle is also on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, look up Herb Oracle because... Once we're done with these universal laws, oh, good morning. Good morning, by the way. Once we're done with these universal laws, I'm going to go back and repost all the episodes um, on Facebook and Instagram. I'm, I'm updating my Instagram page uh, to be more of a checkerboard looking thing that matches Herbal Marie. And, uh, you know, just going through the past episodes uh, to re edit the descriptions and to I guess I need for myself to go through them again. So spirit sometimes confuses me. Um, Yesterday, we pulled cards. We did the law of unconditional love. And um, all the the cards, the messages were very personal to me. And it was saying that I need to put my energy back into herbal Marie. Well, then last night, don't I get all these other ideas coming in? And I'm like, um, is this going to take more attention away from Herbal Marie? Like, I'm thinking, like, I want to, as I am editing the podcast for Herb Oracle, I was going to live stream them. I was going to live stream myself on my YouTube channel. So if you want to hang out with me after this podcast, look me up on YouTube, Sadie Marie Cherico, uh, just like my name is on the podcast page. And um, I might be actually listening to the Herb Oracle podcast as I'm editing them and just having the camera on me running live. And uh, if someone's in the chat, I can pause and say hey and talk. And if something needs discussed more, like if I go back and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I thought that three months ago, I'll stop the podcast to interrupt myself to (laughs) to tell myself. (laughs) Something, but anyways, that might be a possibility. That might be a possibility. I might be hanging out on YouTube when I'm doing the editing, you know, because I'm gonna listen to the podcast anyways. That would also ensure me that I wouldn't fall asleep. Have you ever listened to one of my podcasts and fallen asleep? I know I have. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed and just you know listen to the podcast, make sure that it recorded accurately, like make sure there's no technical difficulties. I never know. I never find out because I always put myself to sleep. So if I'm doing it during the day, maybe I'll stay awake. All right. So yeah, dogs barking all the time. Gotta love this place. Yesterday we did the law of unconditional love, which in a nutshell, according to my beautifully written notes here loving ourselves and others as they are is the law of unconditional love i believe it said that it was a law and a condition i really did like that um i love that because yeah don't isn't that the condition you want to be in uh, i i have this condition it's called unconditional love <laughs> so loving ourselves and others as they are honoring soul paths honoring our own soul path honoring someone else's soul path loving without judgment loving without conditions loving without reservations loving without restraints so you're not holding back you're giving love Um, that is the law of unconditional love unconditional love equals this is what i wrote down equals connection to the all so when you start practicing experiencing and having the condition of unconditional love you understand that we're all connected. We become joyful. We're like more easygoing. We're more agreeable. We say the right things at the right time. Why? Because unconditional love connects us to our higher self. 
So that was yesterday. If you need more of that, go back tomorrow. Go back tomorrow. Go back to yesterday's. Go back tomorrow. That doesn't even make sense. That's hilarious. Go back tomorrow. All right, go back tomorrow and re-listen uh, to the previous podcast and uh, read more about unconditional love. Or listen, today we're going to do two laws. Okay, so now that I have it in my head that I'm wrapping up this podcast, um, we're going to double up today. We're going to do the law of unity and the law of universal sympathy today because it's only a, like a pipsqueak. It's one sentence long. We're just going to throw it in there. Then tomorrow we're going to do the law of vibration and that one looks big so it's going to stand alone and then right because wednesday thursday and then friday will be our last day because there's just no need to drag this on into the new week um friday will be our last day and we will double up on the last two laws and then we will have done 105 universal laws so if you're just joining me, like, I don't know, you just found the podcast Herb Oracle now, it's okay. Finish this week with me and then just go back to the beginning and restart them. Because it doesn't matter which order you do them. I only did them in alphabetical order. This is not like the order of the laws. Um, it's just the printout that I found has them alpha alphabetized. So I just went along with it. Um, but you can do them in any order. You can listen to the podcast in any order. You can follow me over to my YouTube channel, Sadie Marie Cherico. Um, and we are going to kind of brush. Okay, here's my plan. It's crazy. It, it just came to me last night. So I have to re-listen to each of my podcasts. And instead of doing it alone, <laughs> I'm going to live stream while I'm listening to my own podcasts. I know it's kind of ridiculous, but then um, I one I won't fall asleep. Two, um, somebody else might want to be sitting with me, listening to me, listening along with me. And then, like, if I need to push pause and think about something, talk about something. Oh, and I need to be editing my descriptions and putting in links and being all pro about it. I can do that. If somebody comes in that like I love and I'm like, hi, how are you? I can push pause. Um, so follow me over to my YouTube and pimp all right so let's do the law of unity we are all connected and that is what it says with 101 the law of unity we are all connected <clears throat> all bearing the seed of divinity oh just sit with that for a sec we are all connected we all bear the seed of divinity this is the way we start and the way we develop into eternity. It is only while in third dimension physical form and because of the greater separation of our higher self from the personality, we experience the illusion that we stand alone. Fear enters our emotional body because of this illusion and begins to close more profoundly our connection to the source. Also, when we experience great soul growth in some small but profound manner, all benefit. All substance in this universe flows to us and through us. We are all. Okay, so that was kind of intense. That was the law of unity. So let's put that into English now. We're all connected, okay? Every single human has a seed of divinity, even like the worst of the worst, which is sometimes hard for us to accept. They are still part of source. They are still part of the all. They still bear the seed of divinity. It's in there somewhere. And this is the way we all start and the way we develop into eternity. So where are we at? We're in the 3D physical form right now, in our human selves. So we have separated from our higher self. Because of the greater separation of our higher self from the personality, we're experiencing the illusion. We're experiencing the illusion that we stand alone. We're not alone. Nobody's alone. You're not alone. 
but we think we are because we're in this physical form and we have separated ourselves. So what happens? Fear enters the emotional body because of this illusion, because like our souls, like, uh, this is weird. <laughs> like I'm used to oneness and this is so that we are getting this experience of fear because we have separated ourselves from oneness. <clears throat> so we're in this illusion and um, so it's our connection to source, our, or our, dis, our illusion of disconnection. So anyways, bottom line, the law of unity Whenever you have just like a tiny little bit of soul growth or I have a tiny little bit of soul growth, every little bit, even if it's very small, it benefits the all. So when you do your inner work, when you do your healing work, your shadow work, your work that brings you closer and closer and closer to unity consciousness, you are benefiting the all. And then the last thing that it said was all substance in this universe flows to us and through us. We are all. So we are all. We are all. That's you that's the law of unity. Getting ourselves and our silly little small human minds to understand that we are all and all substance in this universe flows to us and through us. We literally have access to everything. We have access, access to the universal um, juice of life, all substance. So we are all. So that's the law of unity. And I want to crunch in number 102, which is the law of universal sympathy. So the, let's just read it real quick. It's one sentence. The law of universal sympathy. This law concerns a yogic power which allows a yogi, and in parentheses it says a person who is devoid of the ego principle. So they've killed their ego. <laughs> killed their ego. They have transcended their ego. They are devoid of the ego principle, a yogi. So this law concerns a yogic power, which allows a yogi to transfer information or influence others' minds. Okay, I like that we're doing these together because, okay, influencing other people's minds, transferring information, the law of universal sympathy, which is not what I would have guessed the law of universal sympathy. I would have guessed like um, universal sympathy, like you feel compassion or like bad for people. <laughs> like sending universal sympathy cards, like Hallmark would be in business for Evs. But this is actually a law that concerns the yogic power, which allows someone who is devoid of the ego principle, an, a yogi, and do you know anyone that has done this yet? 100%? I don't know. But the closer you get to it, the more you could probably transfer information or influence others' minds. So how does that tie into the law of unity? Well, my Course in Miracles lesson today, actually the Jesus channeling, he, he was talking about social media and how when you're on social media, it is really important to ask yourself, what am I posting? It's much more beneficial to the all to post a picture of a puppy or a kitten or something that puts people in joy than to post some really nasty, negative, judgmental bullshit. Jesus didn't actually say that, but that's what he meant. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he meant. So if you have this power, let's say you have social media, you have got a hundred followers, you got a thousand followers, you got 10 followers, whatever. Um, whatever you post is going to influence the people around you. It's going to either <clears throat> benefit the all or it's not. So it's like Jesus was saying like, please be mindful of what you're posting. <laughs> He even said, like, pretend like I'm going to read it, you know, like, um, pretend like your mom's going to read it. Pretend, 
Like your children are going to read it. That's the one that gets me because sometimes I'll post stuff and like eventually my kids will catch on to it and they'll be like, I can't believe you posted that. Like um, the one podcast that I did for Herb Oracle here, um, I can't remember what number it is, but it, it, the title was um, Technology is a Whore That Offers You Nothing in Your Life or something. <laughs> I really got some like, slack for that definitely some whiplash um came back to me like because my daughter saw it and she was like what's a whore and why are you talking like that <laughs> um so anyways be really like mindful about what you're putting out what you're promoting because even if like um, you're trying to bring awareness to something if it's lowering the vibration of people it's really not as beneficial as like you ra helping raise the vibration of others. So I'm guilty of this because like just a couple weeks ago, like last week on Facebook, <clears throat> I posted something about child trafficking because I felt like, you know, people aren't even aware that they're having hearings. They're having like professional hearings trying to talk about what to do about child trafficking. Meanwhile, there are some people that don't even know that's happening. And I just posted it, but then I thought, did that bring down the vibration instead of raising the vibration? Probably. So I am gonna really be mindful, like Jesus said, to use my social media to uplift, um, to use my YouTube channel to spread love, to use my YouTube, um, to use my podcast as something that uplifts people. Like I know, um, when sometimes whenever you talk about things that are real, people are like, I don't know, you know, that didn't make me feel very good. Yeah, that's because their higher self knows better. They're like, don't even go there. So if it don't feel good, don't go there. Um, and, and even if you're not a complete 100% yogic person yet, a yogi, understand that there is a yogic power called the law of universal sympathy and you would be able to transfer information or influence other people's minds. And we can do that now, even not being 100% yogic, right? Even not have, hey, I have not transcended my ego 100%. I don't think you can in this life because you kind of need it to get you around. <laughs> but I definitely know for sure, 100, 100, 100% 100 that I can influence other people's minds. I can influence um, people's vibration, their energetic fields and transfer information. So I need to do it from the perspective of the law of unity. How is this going to benefit the all? And, um, and why would I want to benefit the all? Because I am the all. We are all. We are the all. We have access to everything. And um, yeah, it's really amazing perspective when you start to live life understanding that we are all connected and we're all bearing the seed of divinity. So whenever you think about life like that, you want to help everybody. You want to help the all because the all is you and you are the all the law of unity. Okay, so that's our laws today. We did two. We did two because this is the last week of recording um, for Herb Oracle before I take a winter break. Okay, so <clears throat> I have in front of me the Celtic Tree Oracle by Charlene Hidalgo. H-I-D. D-A-L-G-O. Hidalgo. Um, Charlene Hidalgo. Okay, this is a brand new deck. It's, I don't even know why I want to use it today because I'm not familiar with it one bit. I just got it last week at Raven's Moon in Dubois, Pennsylvania. I bought, I bought myself three decks, like Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> I bought the Rumi deck, which is changing my life. I bought the deck, which one did we use? Uh, Monday it was where'd it go it was the ones with the butterfly dragons the enchanted blossoms um, I bought myself that one which is real cute and then this one and I literally just bought this one because it's a botanical deck and I thought I'll use it for herb oracle um, 
eventually. So maybe by the time I, I get back, I'll under, I'll know this deck a little bit more, but it has an extensive guidebook, like big time. So it, the Celtic Tree Oracle is based on ancient Celtic wisdom, which re revered the trees as living spiritual beings, keepers of sacred knowledge that help us survive and thrive on earth. So this is a deck to help us tune into the trees and access their age-old loving guidance. And on the back of the deck, it says, you will become familiar with the signature energies of the trees and more connected with nature. Inspired to walk through the woodlands and breathe in the revitalizing air of the rainforests. So they're really pretty. I, there's a lot of trees that I am not familiar with. Um, the cards are steeped in Celtic cosmology, which honors the cycles of the seasons. So it seems like a great deck to use as I am wrapping up a season, um, literally in my life, or wrapping up the year. Um, just things are kind of, a lot of things are ending, and then what, what happens when something ends? Something new begins. So these cards teach reverence for all living creatures and respect for our Mother Earth. May they help to connect you to the wisdom of the beautiful, sacred world of the trees. Whew. So I think all of these decks that I bought at her shop were from Blue Angel Publishing. That must be the kind of cards that she stocks. And they're all incredible. But yeah, the guidebook is like... Uh, three pages long for each card. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we should only pull one card. <laughs> we'll see. Woo, all right. So these cards are nice and big. It's kind of a thin deck though. There's only, I'm trying to think, oh, 25 cards. Yeah, so it's kind of just a skinny little deck. Um, but it makes that like I wouldn't even know if I want would want more than 25 cards the way they go into depth into the guidebook so this is the Celtic tree oracle um, and we're just gonna get one card I think that's appropriate I think just one card is appropriate because we're doing the law of unity which kind of says we are all one right we are all we are all we are all one. <laughs> so I don't know if the deck will cooperate. You know, it'll probably spit out three since I asked for one. But I'll give it a little shuffle. They're hard to shuffle because there's not that many. I have another deck. Um, I have like an astrology zodiac deck. And it only has like 24 or 26 cards. So it never seems like that's enough cards, you know. But hey, that's what they did. So we're not going to complain. We're not complaining. <laughs> All right, from the Celtic Tree Oracle, let's just get one card for the law of unity and universal sympathy. Um, we're going to do the one off the top, and then I'm literally going to put the deck to the side. And we're just going to do this one card. I know. I'm, do I'm just doing this one card. Ooh, I shuffled. I shuffled. I cut. I shuffled again. Um, and we got number one, the beef birch number. We got the first card. Okay. What's interesting about these cards is there's some type of old alphabet. I guess it's the Celtic alphabet. Um, and so they kind of look like runes, the Feda. I don't know. I'm not even sure. The Celtic tree divination system. The Celtic tree alphabet. So there is actually um, a Celtic tree alphabet, and they're just lines and diagonal lines. And a, it would be hard to read. My brain, I'm not even going to ask myself to try to understand this alphabet system. Like, I'm already trying to learn the runes because I got um, a bag of runes now. And um, I'm just trying to memorize those, and those make more sense to me than this. But, anyways, there's a little design. Um, with the number of it and I guess I don't even know if I could figure out a it would probably be letter a I'm guessing yeah so letter a and then the beef birch is number one so this is the card that we're, I guess we're gonna maybe do these in order that might be something to when I come back from my seasonal break 
Um, that might be an idea, like just going through these cards in order. I don't know. I'm open to whatever, um, but we'll see. And we could get nerdy with this. Na 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 na. Oh yeah, we can totally get nerdy with this deck. Um, so we got a birch tree. Be the birch you want to see in the world. Birch has come up so, so much. Guess which card I'm thinking about. Um, the Oracle of the Essences. We pull that birch card all the time. And which one is it? It's that one where the hermit is crossing that bridge in the air onto that island of birch trees. That's the birch one, right? What does it symbolize? community, union, support. So that's perfect today because we are talking about the law of unity. So here we go, Birch, the law of unity. Let's move you over here. <laughs> Let's move you over here so I can see. All right, so this is the Beeth Birch, B-E-I-T-H, like Keith, Beeth, that's what I'm guessing. Beeth Birch, um, I was wrong, it's not the letter A, it's the letter B. Okay, so I've already failed at the Celtic alphabet. <laughs> How did I get that wrong? Well, it's all, okay, it's letter B. Um, it's about beginnings. Um, it has a class system. I don't know, there's a lot of information in this book that's probably gonna be over my head. But when I look at the cards, it's a gorgeous, one leaf of this birch tree and then there seems to be like two little seed pods there um so this is a message about endings and new beginnings this is a message about cleansing and purification releasing old patterns releasing old patterns overcoming difficulties Shedding the old, new growth and renewal, pliancy in the in the peaceful resolution of conflict, higher perspective, and a return to innocence. So there are a lot of key words that go with the birch, but I'm loving that you know we were just talking about cycles wrapping up, you know some projects, starting some new projects. Um, it's a new month, you know, every day is a new day, but there is this new energy that we're stepping into. We got out of November, we survived November, what the hell, and then um, here we are, ready to start fresh. I love Return to Innocence because the more we step into our heart space, the more that we see ourselves connected to everyone, it allows us to get back to our original state, like the law of unity said. Everyone has that seed of the divine within them. We all start out as sweet little innocent babies. Everybody did. Everybody did. <laughs> um, it's just really amazing how some people got so sidetracked and um, caught up in the illusion and then they got polarized with negativity and darkness and, you know, but. Everyone started off in this human body, a sweet baby, and they started off innocent. How can we return to that innocence? Well, we can shed the old, we can overcome difficulties, we can release ourselves from old patterns. So I think the biggest pattern that the whole collective could work on right now is releasing themselves from the pattern of being judgmental. The pattern of being judgmental and um, yeah, wanting to inflict harm on everyone, even if it's in the name of justice. You know, so many times like somebody does wrong and then what does the righteous person do? They're like, I hope, I hope that they get their head cut off or I hope that the same thing happens to them. Like locally, the news this week, there was um, two teenagers that basically tortured and beat up and was real assholes to a deer when they were hunting. And um, it was amazing to see everyone wanting now to kill them. <laughs> and it was like, people, you're doing nothing. You're adding no good in the world by wanting 
now you want to inflict harm on them now like you're no better than they are now good job <laughs> your judgment and um your cruelty and your way of judging because that's like humans like they feel righteous um you know to hurt somebody who has hurt somebody and it's like okay but now you're hurting somebody so like we just continue this old pattern this old cycle of violence so what takes us out of that what will be the resolution to that getting ourselves out of judgment who are you to judge anybody you're not <laughs> and that's what i tell myself like you have made so many mistakes you're not perfect you've you've been mean you've had cruel moments um how about you just don't waste your time judging anybody because you're not adding any good to the world when you do it i don't know so anyways let me read from the book. <laughs> the the beef birch initiates the first lunation. At this time of year, we are, <clears throat> as we prepare for winter and seek deep transformation, we honor the crone aspect of the goddess. Oh my goodness, you guys. So up in the top, it has dates like for this card and we're in the Northern, I'm in the Northern hemisphere. So the dates are actually November 1st through the 28th. So I pulled a very um, current card. Um, yeah, so maybe I would, maybe I should go through this deck for myself um, according to the dates. You know, that might be kind of interesting. Um, but anyways, so yeah, that's where we're at. We're preparing for winter. I don't know about you, but I'm not feeling motivated. I want to hibernate. I want to stay in my pajamas all day. I want to go inward. I want to reflect. I want to contemplate. I want to seek that deep transformation. Oh yeah, I want to definitely honor the crone right now. Honor the crone aspect of the goddess. So although crones are harbingers of death, they are also responsible for birth and new life. They are midwives. After a period of emptying and releasing old patterns, acknowledging disappointments and regrets, and embracing our achievements, we listen carefully to the quiet voice within and set our intentions for the year to come. So in this way, we plant the seeds of future possibilities and establish the foundation for the year ahead, which heralds in what we call the dark half of the year, when the new gestates in the dark. So yeah, like as, as we die, we plant another seed and we bring in the new year. We say what we wanna manifest. So this is a perfect message for today. Say what you want to manifest. What kind of reality do you wanna live in? What kind of energetic life do you want to be experiencing? Um, what do you wanna birth? What kind of seeds do you want to plant? Even if you're not gonna be around to see them because they're, they're gonna take a little while to gestate and say, even say you're not ever gonna see them. You still have the opportunity right now to plant seeds. What do you want to add to the all? So another message for Birch is Birch will also help in the peaceful resolution of conflict. She provides a higher perspective and spiritual understanding. She will return you to a state of innocence and non-judgment. So high five to be reading that, that's fun. So getting us back to that innocent state, getting us back to source, source doesn't judge. We came here with free will. We're allowed to do whatever the hell we want. Doesn't mean that you should do whatever the hell you want because you're gonna feel um, the, the return of whatever you do. Yeah, we have free will, but there's also the law of cause and effect. There's laws in place. So you don't really need to waste your time judging other people. Whatever seeds they sow, they will reap the harvest of that. Um, that's why judgment is not, it doesn't serve you because then you're, you're gonna reap the seed of judgment. See what I'm saying? Like just let people do what they, they need to do on their path 
and understand that the universe is going to return to everybody what they sow. Okay, they're, they're, if they're gonna put a seed into their life of cruelty and violence, that will eventually be returned to them. They're gonna learn their lesson eventually. Do you really need to get involved? Do you really need to, to sow a seed of judgment? Because what's gonna happen to you now? You're gonna reap that seed of judgment. You're gonna be judged. You're gonna pull things to yourself that you're not gonna enjoy. You're gonna create yourself an energetic aura to say that you're not gonna like to live in. It's not gonna be the life that you wish that you were living. Why? Because you keep on tainting your own energy field with judgment. You're adding to conflict. You're adding to divide. You're adding to the violence just by putting your attention to it. All right, so anyways, um, it says the orgum for this tree is beef and the letter is B. I don't know what an OG or cam. I don't know what an org cam is. So I definitely could learn a lot by maybe reading the intro <laughs> to this guidebook. <laughs> but anyways, moving on. Um, so we're just pulling a single card today because this is so intense. Um, but I'm going to read it. And um, then there's even a message at the end from the beautiful birch tree. I guess maybe from the deva or the energy or there's the spirit of the tree. So that's how we will end. But yeah, that's you can't pull more than one card from this deck at a time. They're just too long. Um, but I love that, though, because it is winter and the days are long and we need something to do. Um, so if you can get yourself an oracle card an oracle deck that has a guidebook like this, it really will keep you busy and teach you so much. So when you draw the birch card, which we did, we drew the first card of this deck, the beef birch. When you draw the birch card, you can expect new beginnings. You can expect new beginnings. However, in order to move ahead, you may have to tie up loose ends and let go of what is no longer needed. So in your heart, you know what's weighing you down. You know it. So what can you let go of? What things do you not want to take with you into the new year? Do you want to carry around in 2020 resentment, judgment, negativity, heaviness, grief, sadness, isolation? Do you want to bring those into the new year or do you want to do your work now to let them go so that you can move ahead um, so that you can just let go of what you no longer need? So Beef Birch also stands for cleansing and purification. Old patterns are released. You can shed unhelpful influences now, just like this tree sheds its bark. This is a time for forgiveness of yourself and others. So forgiveness is the magical word, the magical practice that lets you let go. So as I've journeyed on my forgiveness practice um, with the Course in Miracles, that's the big game changer for me. But before I started A Course in Miracles, I literally had a list of things that I thought I might never be able to forgive this list, right? Of these wrongdoings, of these things that I've done, that these things that other people have done to me, I actually had a list that I thought I'll never be able to let it go because I just couldn't figure it out how to do it myself. Well, The Course in Miracles is a mind clarifying program and bam, I don't even know how it worked, but I have let pretty much everything go and it feels so good. So kind of be open to this period, this month of December, for it to be a time for you, for you to forgive yourself and for you to forgive others and just let it go. Because once you start the new year, you're going to be so glad that you did. You're gonna be lighter, you're gonna be more easygoing, you're gonna feel more connected to the whole universe, right? And um, that's how you wanna live your life. 
<clears throat> so there is a promise of new starts, renewal, and new life. This is the time to set new intentions now that you have let go of last year's energy. Sit quietly. Sit quietly so that you can listen deeply. From your heart, begin to formulate new plans and new intentions. This is the time to decide what seeds you will plant and cultivate for the year ahead. And this is so true because as a gardener or as a wannabe gardener, <clears throat> um, pretty soon now um, I'll get a new cat, like a couple new catalogs from my favorite seed companies. And this is the time, li like literally, for me to sit and dream and plan and think I would love to have that herb. I would love to grow that vegetable. I would love to have that flower blooming in my yard. Right, so just as you would sit down and plan out your garden, your gardening intentions, your gardening goals, your gardening dreams, allow yourself to dream of the most beautiful garden. Because if you allow yourself to dream of it, I mean, you probably won't get that exactly, but at least you'll have opened yourself up to creating something bigger and better um, than you did last year. So do that with your life too the garden of your life. Allow yourself to dream something bigger for yourself, more beautiful for yourself, more loving for yourself. Allow yourself to plant those seeds within your mind and within your heart, but mostly within your mind because that's what we need to kind of retrain. But just tell the universe, these are the seeds that I want. This is what I want in my life. This is what I want to manifest. This is what I want to experience and allow your seeds to have this time of darkness so that when the time is right, they will sprout and you will cultivate something beautiful for the year ahead. So this beautiful birch card, it also comes in with a message and an energy right now that kind of offers us healing. So birch also offers healing, peace, and resolution in times of conflict. So when you think of the birch tree, her branches are pliant and supple, supple. <laughs> um, take a birch leaf or twig with you or imagine her right now in your mind's eye. So just imagine the birch, bring that spirit of birch within your mind's eye right now. So when you go to resolve a conflict, bring her with you. So either a leaf or a twig or just bring her with you in your mind's eye and she will help you. She will bring in the power of peaceful reconciliation. So if you're in a conflict right now with others or even yourself, Call in Birch to bring in that power of peaceful reconciliation. Take a look at your new year with a higher perspective. Allow your higher self to inform you. Allow your higher self to inform you. Focus on Birch and breathe in her deepest message, which is love and light. Let Birch's heart-shaped leaves remind you that your true wisdom comes from the heart. Allow yourself to look at your life and the world around you with new eyes. Lay aside your judgments and return to a state of innocence. Dang, so how is that jiving with you right now? I mean, allow yourself to look at your life and the world around you with new eyes and lay your judgments aside and return to a state of innocence. Now, I know personally what it's like to all of a sudden realize that I am a judgmental bitch. Absolutely, right? <laughs> 
if you have followed me for any amount of time, you may have picked up on that. So I know how it feels to understand that you need to do work. Um, I know how it is to do the work. And, and luckily, I now know how it feels to get out of that state of mind. Um, not that I don't still have access to it. If I wanted to go there, I could. But I make it a conscious choice every day to choose something different. So in this deck, you could get this card reversed. And I'm going to read the reversal message from the book because I know a lot of people um, are judgmental. They're, they know they need to do their forgiveness practice. They know that they could um, improve upon this. So I'm just going to read the reversed message in case, <laughs> in case that is you. So if you feel um, reluctant to let go of that which is keeping you from moving forward, like you're just like, I don't want to forgive, I can't forgive, I just can't break these patterns, like you just are reluctant to let go of that which is keeping you from moving forward. You're afraid. Maybe you're afraid to release old patterns and unhelpful influences. Maybe you may not be ready to forgive. Or maybe you're just not even ready to deal with it at all. You're just not ready to deal with the conflicts. You're not ready to deal with the process of forgiveness. Um, there's something in your ego mind that is holding you back, that's making you reluctant. So perhaps you are hanging on to the old and you're, it's just not serving you anymore. So if, if you're feeling more connected to the reversed meaning of this card, think about where you are not allowing your life to flow naturally. What are you holding on to so tightly that nothing can change? So if there's something in your life that you're not allowing it to flow, you're just holding on to these old patterns, this old way of being, doing, thinking, judging, you are encouraged to let go so you can move forward. Set your house in order. This is probably not the best moment to begin something new as you have work to do to prepare first. When your thoughts and feelings are aligned with your highest good, then you will be able to clear the way and begin. So it's kind of like starting a relationship um, before you've cleaned up the old energy of your past relationship. Why would you wanna br bring in your old crap to your new project. You know what I mean? It's like buying yourself a beautiful new house and bringing in all your old tattered furniture. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you do that? Would you bring in your old disgusting um, furniture into a beautiful new home? Probably not. Right, so let's clean up, let go, release, replace, repattern, restructure the insides of our minds. Um, think of the inside of your mind as your house, right? Literally, that is where you live all the time. Um, so before you start anything new, clean up the old stuff, he do the healing work, let go, and then you'll be in a better energy to move forward. All right. More reversal, one more reversal message. If you find that you are overly judgmental, now is the time to let such habits of thought go. Okay, I want to read that again. Now is the time to let such habits of thought go. Being judgmental is just a habit of thought. That's all it is. It's a habit of thought. So, if you have a bad habit, right, the best way to let that go is to adopt a new good habit. So when you understand that you being judgmental is just a habit of thought, something that you've practiced, something that you, it's like your default, you just kind of go there, then you're like, oh, well, I need to think differently, right? I need to think differently before I can be different. So it's just a habit of thought and any habit can be changed. Everything can be changed. 
So judgment. Judgment only creates separation. And in truth, there can be no separation. Make an effort to return to innocence and to your connection to all that is. So we're doing the law of unity. We are all. And Birch is coming in to say, return to innocence, return to that pure heart space, get out of judgment, get back to your innocent nature of unconditional love. Okay, return to innocence and to your connection to all that is. So Birch is just really encouraging you to have fun, play a game, take a run, do something fun to remind you what it feels like to be a child again. From this place, you can let go of your resistance and move into your heart space. So as we let go of resistance, we can move into our heart space. I mean, think about like when you were a kid, like a kid kid, you didn't listen to the news. You didn't care about what other people were doing. You were just so absorbed into your fun moments, right? This is like probably before they sent you to school, right? That type of childhood that you didn't care what the five o'clock news was saying. You didn't care what anybody else was thinking or doing. You just wanted to have fun, enjoy yourself and be in the now moment, that innocent now moment. <laughs> So I feel like there's a little bit of like a message like, how about you mind your own business and um, quit being judgmental. And if you are in, you are all up in everybody's business and you are being judgmental, just understand that that is a habit. That's a habit of thought. That's just a habit that like, you're just in the bad habit of being up in everybody's business. And the more you can give yourself permission to get out of it, get distracted, get back into things that you enjoy and that you love, you can start focusing on yourself and you can start returning to innocence. And as you return to innocence, you will start to feel the oneness. You'll feel less separation um, with the whole world, right? Because you're like, we're just love, y'all. We're just love. So move into your heart space. All right, so we're going to wrap this podcast up with a message from the birch goddess, deva, spirit, whatever you'd like to call it. The birch tree wants to talk to us. So oh, let's just hold the birch in our third eye, in our mind. Um, or if you're lucky enough to be outside listening to this podcast, go sit by a birch tree. Here's her message. I am the beautiful birch. I wear bright gold and red leaves in the autumn. My branches grow down long and slender. My many heart-shaped leaves dance and whisper in the wind. Close your eyes and listen to the sounds of my many leaves rustling in the autumn winds. Listen to my encouraging messages. See how I love to grow tall and straight. Look up and see the sky. Look all the way to the tip of my highest branches. Look to the light. And as you do so, allow yourself to lighten up. Imagine you are the eagle landing on my highest branch. Seek a higher perspective. You can see the whole picture. You can see the whole picture. The exact opposite of not seeing the forest for the trees. What do you notice? I encourage you to open your eyes and allow your innocence to come forward. Let go of any need for separation and judgment. Allow yourself to remember how it feels to enjoy yourself and feel as one with everything and everyone. 
come into my field, come into my aura, and we will start over from this moment. We will begin a whole new story that is set in this very moment where everything is already given. Keep facing the light and allow me to bring you the awareness of my higher perspective. Woo, so wow, there it is, a message from the birch tree. So stinking sweet, am I right? Yeah, it's so sweet when I come in here with my rowdiness. Um, so that's our message today. Let go of judgment, get out of separation, raise your vibration, raise your own perspective, be guided from your higher self and let go of the conflict, let go of the judgment, let go of the divide. The most beneficial thing that you can do for this world is to get out of separation and get into unity. Okay, that's how we will become a powerful collective when we realize that we are all connected all of us, every single one of us. And the more work we do on an individual level to feel that unity, the more the collective benefits. So any type of work that you're doing benefits the all. The law of unity is what we did today. The law of, what was it? Universal sympathy, which said that we have the power to influence other people. So as you improve your life, as you let go of judgment, as you do your forgiveness work, as you feel more love, as you feel more connection, as you return to your heart space and your innocence that you were born with, you are adding so much goodness into this world, into the all. You are helping by you being a guiding light, right? As you turning to the light, choosing the light, being the light, I am the light, I am the love, I am. As you choosing to look at the, the good side of things, the light side of things, you are choosing what you want to manifest more of into this world. So be the birch that you want to see in this world. Maintain that awareness of your higher perspective. And what is your higher perspective telling you to do right now? Let go. Let go of everything that is not serving you. And for sure, for sure, judgment, separation, negativity, criticalness, and violence do not serve this planet. So do your part and let it go.